Welcome to the channel. I finally have a video up on my Talk With My Live page. Yo, thank you so much for listening. I just want to thank you in advance for being here. Um, and I'm just so excited about this channel that we're starting. I'm excited about this journey that we're embarking on right here with this one. Um, I'm going to well, start the timer. I'm going to take two minutes to kind of introduce what we're doing here, and then we'll try to go in. This is my first time trying to do something like this, so please bear with me. First of all, I want to thank you again for being here. Um, I Hopefully, I can hold your attention in this, this, that. We're, this is the Topher Pala page. Really want to focus in on growing in faith, motivation, encouragement, you know, growing in love. Even, even at times, financial stuff, I don't know where we're going to go, but I just look forward to it. This is kind of like a podcast, I guess. Um, but it's not really about just what I'm thinking. I, I really want to reflect on like um, the content that I have at, at my house. Like I want to reflect on the books that I have at my house. I want to reflect on the, the teachers that I read and that I stay close to. I want to reflect on that publicly, you know, through, through the YouTube content, you know, because for two reasons, one, my family and friends, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not really good at staying in touch with people. So people are always wondering like, yo, Topher, what are you doing? Where, where, what have you been up to? Blah, blah, blah. That's one. Two, um, I, I, I want to, well, hold on. Let me finish that thought. I'm not really good at keeping up with people. So I would really love for people, my f family and friends to know what's going on in my life. And this is going to be a clear example and a clear portrayal of what's going on when I'm at home, when people can't contact me, this is what I've been doing. So, you know, you get, you can rest a little bit and you don't have to be too concerned. Okay. And then the second thing is I really want to share my journey because it, it really helps somebody else who's going through their journey. And maybe what I'm doing or what I'm going through, my personality, my character, my story might be similar to somebody else's. And, and, you know, it, it might, encourage them to be like okay if he could do it i can do it let's go in okay that's two minutes let's jump in um so what i want to do with this book is i just want to read i guess i'm gonna do like 30 episodes or 30 podcast 30 somethings i'm gonna do like 30 of them because i really want to go through the chapter will i go through the whole chapter in each it's a big chapter though so. yeah no nah, we're not gonna be doing that hold over Hold up, bro. We're going to have to cut these up, bro. Yeah, we got to cut these up, bro. Mm-mm. 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 Mm -mm. Nah. <laughs> no, sir. So, chapter one is going to be like four or five parts. We just gonna, I'm going to put that out there right now. How long are we going to make these uh, episodes? I don't know. Let's just jump in, though. So, Mike Bickle, Growing in Prayer. I love Mike Bickle. I'm thankful for Mike Bickle because in 2013, like, he... I came to Christ in 2009, went through, you know, a, a couple of years of just really the blessing. 2009, 2010, 2011 were, were really great years because, like, I was getting to know the Lord, finally walking in the Lord after, like, 20 years of darkness. And, uh, and then I finally came to the light, and it was just like, whoa, I did not know that this was possible for my life. I didn't, I didn't know that there was this whole other reality called walking in Jesus. I, I didn't know. But in 20, 2011, at the end of 2011 and in, in 2012, the end of 2011 and all 2012 was a uh, turmoil kind of period. And then 2013 was like I was at the bottom of uh, hit the rock bottom. And then I found out about IHOP and Mike Bickle and and, and uh, Mike Bickle's teaching really IHOP. I think IHOP is cool. I love IHOP. I love the music that comes out of it, but I'm more so. Uh, impressed with Mike Bickle's teachings on the Mike Bickle Library. So it's just, it's just, you know, it's a long story. Maybe we'll get into more of that just throughout this uh, podcast. Um, but I'm just really thankful for Mike Bickle because he helped me to get off of the ground in 2013. And I I've just been reading his writings ever since then. Um, and it's, ju it's just a beautiful thing. And it's just, I, I think it's amazing that I get to live in the same time period as this guy. So I'm super excited about it. Anyway, let's go in. Let's just jump in. So growing in prayer, a real life guide to talking with God. You know, um, you know, I want to grow in prayer. So let's go. Chapter one. Oh, part one is the foundation for prayer. So it's broken up into parts. 
man, this first, I, I feel like I'm going to be boring some people with this first episode. I just got to go in and stay confident. Um, so it's broken into five parts. Part one, it's like seven chapters. Part one, the foundation for prayer. Part two, intercessory prayer. Oh, that's going to be fun. Part three, devotional prayer. Part four, going deeper in prayer. Part five, the in integration of prayer and worship. I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> prayer. <laughs> Part six, the end time global prayer movement. Ooh, that's a little bit over my head right there, but I look forward to getting into that, you know, like a month from now. Okay, part one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Chapter one. Let's go. I don't want to read all that extra stuff. We just can go straight in. Um, also, I do want to say, like, I haven't I haven't read this book in a minute, so it's about to be a lot of fresh content, and uh, I, I just want to reflect on what's going on. So anyway, um, I didn't know that I was going to become an audiobook author. Uh, I mean, not author, but an audiobook narrator, but here we go. Hopefully, I don't get copyright strike for uh, reading this book on, on stream. You know, uh, I do not own this book. I don't own the, the, the thoughts of this book, and you know, so let's get, let's get it. Chapter one, um, call to pray. We begin our journey of growing in prayer by acknowledging that prayer is not only for beginners, but also for mature believers. Otherwise, there would be no point in trying to grow in it. The Lord calls every believer to a life of prayer, no matter how long he has been saved or how experienced he is in this discipline. The best thing all of us can do to improve ourselves, our lives and our relationships is to grow in prayer. Prayer is a means of connecting with the Holy Spirit who energizes us to to love God. Our love for God then causes us to overflow in love for others. Jesus made an absolute statement about our inability to walk in the fullness of our destinies in God without growing in prayer. He said, I need to be taking notes. He said that unless we abide in him, we can do nothing related to bearing fruit or maturing in our spiritual lives. John 15, 5, he who abides in me and I in him bear, bears much fruit for without me, you could do nothing. Let's reflect. Uh, he said prayer is not only for beginners, but it's also for mature believers. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know how to reflect on. Let me, you know, I, let me go in real quick. Let me go in real quick. We don't know the direction we're gonna go, but we're gonna go somewhere. Um, <sighs> prayer. So prayer. I, I, over the years, I've just heard so many different people talk about prayer. And uh, it kind of got it's kind of confusing. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna be humble. Uh, I just want to warn everybody. Um, this podcast is about to be a confessional, so um, <laughs> buckle your seatbelt. But prayer to me is kind of confusing because I don't know if it's like you're on your bedside, on your knees, and you and you're praying, or if you you pacing back and forth in a room with music playing, or you actually go into a physical closet and close the door and you. You know, or if like you have to speak in tongues or you don't speak it to like, I, I just I I don't know. I don't know. I've heard so many things that I just I don't know. So when he says prayer is not only for beginners, but also for mature believers, I, I, I've been in the Lord. I've been walking in the Lord for like ten, over 10 years, but I still feel like a beginner. I do like I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I feel like a beginner. So I mean, prayer is for me. Let's go. Okay, the Lord calls every believer to a life of prayer. Oh, well, what did he say? What was they talking about? They were talking about like night and day. I don't know. It'll probably be in the book. No matter how long he's been saved, the best. Okay, the best thing I always do. Improve our law or improve ourselves, our lives, our relationships to grow in prayer. Okay, I, I really like this. The best thing all of us could do to improve ourselves, our lives, and our relationships is to grow in prayer. Like there's a so there's a lot of things that I try to do on my own strength. You know, one of those is I try to be a, like a good friend. I try to be a good son, a good brother, um, a good worker. You know, a good employee. I try to do a lot of these things on my on my own, like just in my own strength. And the sad thing about it is it's impossible. As a, as a son, um, you know, I I don't. As a son, I'm very stubborn and, and and prideful in the sense that I want to establish my own existence. Um, and so I often try to distance myself from my parents 
because I want to establish my own existence and I want to establish my own success. I want to establish my own quote unquote kingdom. And, and it's a, uh, and it's hard to honor my parents and to serve my parents, um, without, without first humbling myself under the right hand of the Lord and understanding that I need the Lord, um, and trying to walk in a lifestyle of, you know, conversing with the Lord. If I don't talk to God, if I don't, if I don't read the Bible, then it's hard for me to humble myself under my parents. It's hard for me to honor them and to seek to, you know, cling to them, it, 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 understanding that they have a position. I was born into a, uh, um, subordinate position to my parents at birth. So it, it's not, it's not that I can't go and be myself you know, and, and establish my own life and receive and, and seek my own autonomy. But at the same time, it's very important for me to remember that the Lord put me under these two people. And it's very important to honor them uh, for who they are. Simple as that. Um, also, another thought just came to me. So my understanding of prayer, even through all of the, the, the confusion, my idea of prayer is talking to God and God talking to me. What does that look like? You know, I'm a very scientific dude. <laughs> Maybe that'll change at some point, but I'm a very scientific dude. So I look at prayer as God talking to me usually happens. It's, it's, it's twofold. It's me reading the Bible. So the words of the Bible, when I read the Bible, it is the Lord. It is the father. It is God talking to me directly. That's one. But then also the inspiration that comes through me reading the Bible. So I'm reading John three and I'm getting like these impressions, that's God talking to me through, you know, through the spirit as I read the Bible. So the words of the Bible are, uh, are, are the Lord speaking to me. And then the impressions that come as I read the words in the Bible, that's the Lord, that's the spirit speaking to me deeper. So I, that's God talking to me when I read the Bible. And then me just, just kind of expressing my thanks and my, you know, desires and requests to the Lord and my worship to the Lord and just, just audibly expressing it. That's prayer. Also, I believe that the thinking, thinking it is prayer too. I believe that maybe that's going to change too. As I read this book, maybe he's going to be like, man, you can't just think about it. You got to actually say it to the Lord. And then I'm going to be like, ah, man, so I, don't, I need to change my thoughts. Um, but yeah, but to improve, I, I feel like the biggest improvements in my life, first of all, as a son, even as a brother, as a brother, the biggest improvements in my sibling relationships have come as I walk close to the Lord in fellowship with the Lord and then interact with my brothers and my sisters. And I'm talking about my physical brothers and sisters. It, it goes the same for my spiritual brothers and sisters. But I'm talking about physical for now. When I try to relate to my brothers and sisters, we have history. We, we grew up, we grew up with certain um, values. We grew up with certain opinions. We grew up with certain um, like uh, uh, like animosities that we have to that we have to work through and that we had to work through. And so if I relate to them just off of like the physical, there's really not a lot to go on. But as I as I talk to the Lord and I receive the love, the joy, the peace of the Holy Spirit, and it's just in me, I, I start to talk to my physical brothers and sisters, I start to talk to them differently. I, I think they can feel it too. Um, you know, as far as work, um, the biggest improvements that I've had as an employee, you know, just being humble, learning to be humble and serve where, where I need to serve, those times have come when I've been walking with the Lord and fellowship with the Lord. You know, when I go to work focused on getting a paycheck, bro, I start slacking. I'm like, bro, I'm not trying, bro. I'm just trying to hurry up and get to next Friday, bro. I, I don't really care about nothing that I'm doing here today. I just want to get to next Friday. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> and I think what I might do is uh, let's just kind of reflect as we come to some come to something good just reflect on it but anyway prayer yes improvements yes only through the lord hold on hold on hold on yeah let's keep going wait reflecting on paragraph two i'm all over the place 
thanks for being here um prayer is a means of connecting connecting with the holy spirit um so i, I love that too uh they pointed out a scripture where it said uh, the fellowship of the spirit be with you and they were like man you know talk to the holy spirit and spend some time with the holy spirit and you know that i i i feel like that is a very important part of my faith as well and it has been um just being able to sit in the room and and see the holy spirit as my counselor as my helper the one who helps me and um the one who 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 speaks for me in my weaknesses presses through those the the interceder the intercessor yes the holy spirit you know, it's it's been a powerful thing. Let's keep going forward. Let's keep going forward. Okay. Our love for God then causes us to overflow in love for others. Again, when I can be humble under the Lord, it's so much easier for me to walk in humility with people. When I can, when I can, there's a song, there's a song, um, there's a song that I was singing earlier. I saw an app. And it's uh my my Jesus my Savior. Lord, there's none like you. All of my days, I want to pray wonders of your mighty love. <laughs> but that song, like, it's so I bring it up for a reason. That song, I I like when I hear that song, man. I, everybody in the room, y'all better step away from me because I'm about to get a quiet time. Huh? Simple as that. As soon as I hear that first, like, two notes, as soon as I hear the first two notes, you ever to watch out. I'm about to fellowship. Simple as that. Um, but, but when I feel the love of Jesus, for instance, through, through that song, and I feel that intimacy, it's so much easier for me to walk in love with people now. It's so much easier, especially, with, especially my brothers and sisters in Christ, like, it, when I feel the love of Jesus, it's so much easier for me to share love, the love of Jesus, with my brothers and sisters in Christ. If I try to talk to them from my flesh, bro, I, it's just, it, it's, it, man, you get the point. Jesus made an absolute statement. Oh, fullness of our desti destinies in God. Mm, I want that. I was just talking to a friend about that uh, recently. Um, I told her about, you know, it, there are some people who want to use the grace of God to be like, you know what? I want to use the grace of God to kind of just do my own thing. And, you know, the Lord is going to receive me always and love me always. And, um, you know, I, I just, I've just been encouraged by people to receive the grace of God to, to say, to use it, to propel me into the fullness of what God has for me in this lifetime and for the next. I don't want to use the grace of God to say, okay, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And then boom, I'm in the kingdom. No, 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 no. I want to use the grace of God to say, I am standing. I am standing in this beautiful mystery. Now I want to stand in it deeper. And I want to go all the way. I want to go all the way, all the way there where the Lord has called me in this life. That's where I want to go. I want the fullness of the destiny that the Lord has for me in him. I want that. I want to use the grace of God to press into the fullness of the destiny that he has for me as I walk in him. Simple as that. That was a that was a lot right there. That was a lot, but I think we got through it. Um, but yeah, I want the fullness. I want the fullness. That's just one of my favorite words in the faith is I want the fullness. Okay, next one. Um, we can do nothing related to bearing fruit uh, or maturing in our spiritual life. And he brought up that scripture, he who abides in me and I am, bear much, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Um, so as far as bearing fruit, this is, this is like, again, confession, man. Woof. I had a friend tell me, hey, you know what repentance is? I was like, what is it? I think it's when you, you know, you change your ways. They said, look at the scripture right here. It says, bear fruit in keeping with repentance or something like that. I need to have my Bible when I'm doing this. But but it was so cool because it was like bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And then if I look at this right here, if you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit. It's like, OK, so repentance in a way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Repentance. If I look at John 15 and that verse, I should have looked up that verse before I hit record. I'll find it right after this recording. 
Um, but bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Well, check this out. I can only bear fruit as I walk with Christ, as I abide in Christ. Right. So if I'm abiding in Christ, I'm bearing fruit. Right. So if I'm abiding in Christ, that's my repentance right there. Boom. <laughs> abiding in Christ. You know what I'm saying? Walking with the Lord, talking with the Lord, staying in the quiet place with the Lord and bearing fruit. See, if I'm bearing fruit, that means I'm remaining in Christ. If I'm bearing fruit, that means that's proof of my repentance. I'm not trying to teach. I'm not trying to. I'm, 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 I'm seeing this right now. And this ain't even a teaching moment. This is just a podcast. I'm just having fun. We had 20 minutes. We need to go forward. We need to finish this up. OK, let's keep going. The next paragraph, because we are not the source of spiritual life ourselves, we cannot generate it. Nor can we receive it unless we abide in Christ. I like that. We cannot generate spiritual life. We got to abide in Jesus. Just as it is impossible for us to jump 100 feet, even if we push ourselves, it is impossible for us to generate spiritual life. OK, I see. You. <laughs> it is not an issue of practice. We were not created to be able to jump 100 feet. And neither were we created to have spirit life while living independently of the spirit. Ooh, We must abide in Christ and grow in prayer to make our lives work. I like that. The Holy Spirit will move in a new and powerful way in your heart and life as you take time to grow in prayer. The change may not happen overnight, but it will most certainly happen. The discipline of prayer will eventually become delight in prayer. Mm. OK, so we started with discipline. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. We started as discipline and then it turns into delight. So first I, I discipline myself to pray. And then it turns into a delight. OK, we're going to see. Dryness. Next, next, next uh, sentence. Dryness in prayer will gradually be replaced by a vibrant dialogue with God. Ooh, dialogue. That's dialogue is two people talking. You see that a vibrant dialogue. So I'm speaking to the Lord. The Lord is speaking to me. Mm, I like that. That will change your life and result in many answered prayers. You know how you know how to not get your prayers answered. You know how to not get your prayers answered. Don't pray because <laughs> then they won't get answered if, they, if you don't. I was trying to go for it. That didn't come out right. That came out a little bit uh, a little weird. OK, next paragraph. I invite you to begin the next stage of your journey in prayer right now. There is no better time than today. Do not wait for a spe special spiritual experience to begin to grow in prayer. We grow in prayer by actually praying. Beginners in prayer mature by prayer more, pr praying more. It is the same principle we embrace when learning to play a musical instrument. I play the guitar. We become better the more we practice. OK, so prayer is like playing a guitar. Wait a minute. If prayer and we about to close this out in a second, because that's the uh, yeah, we're going to close it out in a second. So prayer is like playing a guitar. If pr if prayer is like playing a guitar. Then I can pray in different keys, like a different key. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I want to get too far. I learned how to. So the key signatures could be symbolic of, I have no idea where I'm going with that. That's too hard to think about. Uh, I'll think about that off stream. What else we got? Dryness in prayer. You know, uh, yeah, I know what that feels like when, man, did I get a prayer time today? I need to stop this recording and go get a prayer time right now. You know what? Yeah, I'm about to do that. I need to get a prayer time. Yo, so I just, um, that's 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 the first segment of chapter one. We're going to go ahead and close out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, talking with me. Uh, we could go on forever with this book and just talking. Um, but what I want to do is uh, close it out and let's let's look forward to getting to that next one. Again, this is the first time I ever did something like this. Uh, if we're going to keep going forward, I don't know what it's going to look like, but hopefully it it is be cool and hopefully I grow in prayer. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for listening. I love you guys. Um, I'm so thankful and grateful for you. Um, and uh, if you've been trying to reach me, I'm sorry for being so distant. Uh, this is what I've been doing. I've been doing this and trying to grow and I will see you soon. I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah. So again, thank you guys so much. I will see you in the next podcast.